Morning people, uh, Nick from Meat Smoke Fire here for another live cook. Um, we've got some lovely autumnal weather. Uh, it's peeing it down, uh, just what we like. Um, but that shouldn't stop you barbecuing. As Helena always says, and I'll turn the camera in a bit and show you who's here. Uh, there's only two accessories you need uh, to be able to cook all year round. One of them's a good umbrella. So we've got an umbrella up and Helena's not even stood underneath it. So come this way a little bit. And the second one is a glass of wine, but it's a little bit early for that for me. So uh, I've got my Coke hidden away, um, but yeah. Um, so I'm just gonna show you what's going on quickly and then I'll come back into all the intro and so on. So in this egg, uh, we have bubbling away nicely. Oh, sorry, steam up. <laughs> bubbling away nicely, just some mints. I've got it in a cast iron pa uh, Dutch oven. Um, if you watched a couple of weeks ago, this is the one we seasoned. I've done nothing else to it since. Um, and all I'm doing is just frying it off. And what I want to show you in a couple of minutes is um, there's still a lot of liquid in there, the fat in there and the moisture in there. I want to boil that off. So um, we'll come back and you'll see that. So I'm just gonna open it a tiny bit just to warm it up. And then we'll come back under the brolly and I'll do the intro. <laughs> so um, this week, three, diff three different dishes. Uh, we are going to do a smoked chili con carne. So that's what you've seen there. Um, so we're gonna put some mints in there and a whole load of other stuff and make a beautiful smoked chili con carne. And I'll tell you why it's so much better to do it on the egg than it is to do it inside. Because a lot of you say, well, you put it in a pan, you may as well have done it in the oven. No, I'll show you why in a minute. Um, second dish we're going to do today, we're going to do a starter. We're going to take some seasonal figs um, and we're going to do those with some goat's cheese. So we used some goat's cheese a couple of weeks ago. If you don't like goat's cheese, you could substitute in something else, uh, feta maybe or something like that. Um, so we're going to do some goat's cheese uh, in that, wrap them in prosciutto and grill those. So the cheese, the cheese um, melts inside, the figs get really soft and gooey. And then we're going to put some honey and some balsamic over them. It is an amazing starter. I know all the figs on the trees around here, um, we've got several in the village. Um, they're all looking nice and ripe or getting there. So we're gonna do that. And then because the weather has changed, we thought we'd uh, talk about cold smoking. So um, a bit of a, a bit different. We're not gonna cook anything. We're gonna cure some salmon and then we're gonna use this, which is a Pro-Q cold smoke generator um, that you can get. And I'll tell you where to get those and I'll put a link up um and this will generate some smoke and we're going to smoke some salmon that we, we're going to cure um and so you can have you know lovely christmas smoked salmon you've got to try this it's amazing but we're also going to smoke some cheese at the same time um they taste great so we'll do a little bit more of that towards the end um so i'll show you that perfect right intros <laughs> obviously i'm here and a wet Helena today in all her rain gear. There's nobody else here, so there'll be no typing going on. Andrea's not here today. It's just the two of us. So Helena will um, uh, read the questions if she can and read them out. Um, so do ask as we go through it. Um, I'm also going to show you a couple of other products of stuff that's out and about now and what we're going to look at. Um, but I'll hand you back to Helena. Right. I need to blow my nose. It's a good start. Um, so, um, smoked chili con carne. Why should we do it in the egg? Um, the key is the smoked bit. Um, when you smoke food in the egg, like a chili con carne, it's one of the few dishes that I actually do love a lot of smoke on. It gives it this richness, this umptuous, umptuousness, um, and it just takes chili and uh, bolognese and those sorts of things. It just takes it up a notch and it really makes it lovely and rich. Um, so that's what we're going to do in the egg over here. Um, it will be on there for pretty much the rest of the day, but you'll see how I make it and then we'll just leave it ticking over, ticking over, getting that smoke in there. Okay, so let's have a little look, see where we're at. Um, yeah, don't get too close, you might steam up. So what you should see here, um, what I do is always fry off the mince first. And what I'm looking to do is get in enough heat in there that when this moisture goes, which it's starting to do now, uh, and that's why I put it in before we started. You'll start to hear um, the mince crackle. Um, so you need a good amount of heat under there. So probably around 200 degrees, it's probably a little bit low. So I'll turn it up again a little bit. Um, you'll start to hear the mince crackle. And that crackle is the Maillard reaction. It's when um, the, the 
proteins in the meat are turning to sugars and they're caramelized and you see that and it will go brown on the outside. If you can do that with your bolognese or with your chili, you'll get a much beefier flavor. So um, you definitely want to be doing that. And that's why I always start with my mince, get it in there um, and get it frying, frying off. Um, I try, try and break it up so it's not in clumps. But you can see a lot of that moisture now is gone. And if we turn this up, we'll start to get that crackle going. Right. Um, do you want to stand under that? <laughs> it keeps moving and standing in the rain. So I don't mind if I get a bit wet. Um, to go into it, soggy onions. Now let me just take the lid off. We've got some chopped onions. Um, so we'll be adding those. We've got some garlic that is very soggy. Well, the top is. We've got some tomato puree, um, salt and pepper, and then we've got some beans. Now some people don't like beans uh in their chili i do so we've got some beans we've got some tin tomatoes some red pepper some cumin to give it a really earthy flavor some salty flavor from uh, our uh, worcestershire sauce and that's pretty much it a little bit of olive oil in there that we already put in to start it so quite an easy recipe but it's just delicious we've demoed this i'll move under the frolly it's getting harder this way we've demoed this um quite a few times for big green egg and everyone who's had it loves it um, you can spice it up as much as you want or you can you know keep it fairly mild that's up to you but the longer you cook it in the egg the better and what i'm going to do i'll grab them i'll be using some wood chunks um, i don't soak them i think we've covered that before um, i don't see the need to soak them they're not going to smoke until they burn um, and i as i always say at demos you know we haven't been making boats out of wood um, for thousands and thousands of years because it soaks up water. Um, we make it out of wood because on the whole it doesn't soak up water and it tends to allow our boats to float. So um, I don't see the reason why you need to soak stuff. I don't soak my wood chips or my chunks. So we're going to use those. Um, I am going to plug these guys because uh, they are do an excellent product. Um, it's wood chunks. I get them from Amazon. I'll put a link up. These ones are Sweet Chestnut, one of my favourites, and they're from um, the guys Grilling Woods in Hertfordshire. Um, I've been and visited them, and you'll see one 20 quid box, you get lots of chunks. So really great value um, from the guys down there in Hertfordshire. So on Amazon, and I will link those. So that's what we're gonna use. Right, let's have another look. Come on, start crackling. Here we go. Ooh, that's what we're after, that crackle. And if you look, you can start to see, I'll grab a bit out, I don't know if you can see, starting to go a little bit brown on the edges. That's exactly what we're after. Um, tell us, by the way, if we get rain on the lens or you can't hear us or, um, cause we haven't got any, any other, no, we haven't got the iPad today to watch. So, uh, come back under. <laughs> so, have there been any questions so far? Not yet. Okay. Uh, other than Sarah hasn't got a hangover. Sarah's not got a hangover. Who've we got on? Who've you uh, seen? Steve uh, is on. Steve Sue's... from Histon. Yes. Brilliant. Just around the corner. Mike Greasley's on. Morning, Mike in London. Uh, um, not so... an egg owner yet. We'll get him one day. Uh, uh, Sue Stoneham. Morning, Susan. Uh, Mark from Newcastle. Oh, morning, Mark. Smoke fine food. So Susan Stoneham, by the way, in Devon, uh, cooks on the Camado. Watch her live cooks as well. She is awesome. So morning, Mum. Uh, uh, Mum's on. Mama's on. Uh, Gary Brindley. Morning, Gary. Uh, oh, risk it for a brisket is slightly hungover. Oh dear, not good. Well, right, let's crack on. Right. So all I'm gonna do now, these are cracking away nicely. You can see they've got some lovely brown bits on the edge. We could take this further. Um, I know I've forgotten. My beef stock. <laughs> I thought about that a second oh, ago. Well. Yeah, you take the camera, I'll go and grab no, it. No, I'll go and grab it in a second. We don't need it yet. But we'll get that in there. We'll get some onions in there. And we'll start to fry these off. We'll soften them up. We're going to get some garlic in there. So I've got about four or five small cloves of garlic going in. And then we can just mix that all together on this high heat and start frying that down. Okay, so Jane has asked a question. Yes. Cast iron, does it need to be natural or can it be like Le Creuset type coated? It can be Le Creuset 
coated. Um, so Big Green Egg do enameled cast iron. Um, Le Creuset obviously do enameled cast iron. The only thing when you're smoking like we're going to do and you're using enamel cast iron, you're going to get a smoke all around the outside and it will turn it like blacky brown. Um, it does come off, you can scrub it off, but it's a lot easier just to use a normal cast iron and they're so much cheaper than the Le Creuset. Jane, I would say that if you are precious about your car, in, about your Le Creuset, then don't use them in the egg because they never come back up perfectly, but they, they do come up quite clean. Yeah, we use, we've got um, cheaper versions of Le Creuset yeah. we're using there. Um, I've also got the big green egg stuff, which I guess is a I think it's cheaper than the Le Creuset stuff. We use that, that's enameled, um, works really well. But when I'm doing something as smoky as this, I really like to um, uh, use just the natural cast iron. It, there's no difference in flavor. Oh, it says, spitting. Um, there's no difference in flavor, but it will just make it a lot easier to clean up. And you may as well do it. I think those are about, I wanna say 40 quid, maybe a bit more than that now. I haven't bought one in a while, but um, <laughs> You know, we can sort that out. Chris Landis says, uh, have you not thought about a covered outdoor kitchen for the UK weather? Uh, yes, we thought about it, but um, <laughs> we thought about it a lot. <laughs> I know Susan Stone of down in Devon will be laughing at me because she has a nice cover on. Most people do. Um, the sun comes around here. The sun you know, comes this way and putting a cover over here. Um, just doesn't work so we, we're thinking of putting an electric awning over here but then as soon as, the we? Well, sort of. <laughs> um, as soon as the wind gets up then the awning has to go in I don't want a barbecue shed um, it doesn't fit with our house and garden um, an umbrella or a coat it's fine well, it's not very often I'm stood out here um, cooking for this long you know it's normally come out give it a stir, go back indoors. That's the beauty of the egg. You don't have to be out the whole time. So, right, that's softening up a bit. So we can then start to add a few more things in. So I'm gonna put some black pepper in. So Mama said to get rid of stains on the inside of your La Cruze, bring, bring some water to the boil and it gets rid of the stains. Ah, there you go. Well played, Mama. Uh, some molten salt, we'll get that in there. I won't go too heavy because I am going to go and find the stock cubes in a bit. Um, some tomato puree, always better with tomato puree. Obviously uh, squeeze from the middle. Squeeze from the middle, Helena loves that. Um, I'll put that back in the fridge just like that. <laughs> that's how, that's how, oh, see we've got a hole in as well. Nice. Um, that's how tomato puree should be. No, I think I've just dropped a bit on me. Um, so now we're going to get some chipotle in there. Um, so chipotle you can either use a chili a sauce or i've got dried chipotle this um, chipotle is, is um smoked jalapeno dried jalapenos so i'm going in quite heavy because i like it smoky okay and we'll give that a nice stir up oh look at that Right, what are you going to do? Sing while I go and get some beef stock? <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> Let me just run and get that. But um, Morning, Mark. Yeah, talk to people. Uh, I have a green egg Dutch oven pan. Do I need to do anything before I use it for the first time? Um, I don't think so, Claire, but we'll check with... Mr. Meat Smoke Fire when he's back. No, Sarah, I'm not going to sing. You're fine. Right, we're back. Um, so someone's just asked, I have a big green edged egg Dutch oven pan. Do I need to do anything to it before I use it for the first time? Uh, no, not really. They're pre-seasoned mostly. If it's not rusty, it's fine. So go and use it. So beef stock, I use the liquid stuff. So I'm just going to put some of that in there. Perfect, right that stir up everything's starting to oh you can smell that chipotle in there now right shut that down i'm gonna open all my tins up now oh i need to put my peppers in get those in so it's just two red peppers just chopped up Let's stir those in now you'll notice i haven't yet put any of the wood chunks on um, no point yet 
um, wood, the wood smoke is, will stick to something that's hot, uh, so cold and wet. Um, so if you're ever smoking meat on there, always put your chips and chunks in so that they're burning at the beginning of your cook because that's when it'll have most impact. Um, at the moment, it's not really going to stick to that mince. It's not going to do a lot to it because it's hot. It's, it's, it's cooking quite quickly. So I tend to put it in just after I put all the wet stuff in. <coughs> so we'll get these tins open. So we're going to go in with um, two tins of tomatoes, he says. There's the other tin of tomatoes. Two tins of beans. So tomatoes going in. Controversial, but I always put them in with the bean liquid. Um, it's got a load of flavour in it. Just put it in there. Mm. Controversially, you've got white kidney beans as well. Yeah. I've got two of them. And, yeah. and then, as Helen has just said, controversial today, white kidney beans. We didn't have red ones, but they're all the same. And this one isn't full top. So that can go in as well. Let's give that a good stir up. And now this, I'm going to turn the egg down in a minute, but to that, I'm going to add, I'm going to come in this side from you, add some water. Just a couple of tins of water. Do you not put any red wine in it? No. Oh. In a bolognese, I would, not in a chili con carne. Okay, definitely. I'm going to grab a set of gloves. Trusty Amazon gloves still going nicely. Not as easy to put on when you've got wet hands. And we'll take the whole lot out and put these chunks of wood in. And what you will see is we're going to get a lot of fire. It's got quite hot, which uh, I'll turn it right down now. We're going to get a lot of smoke coming out of this. So the best day to do cooks like this that are quite smoky. Rainy days like today because your neighbours won't have the washing out. <laughs> so I've just turned that down. So it's probably around, uh, it will come down to around 150 when it's cooled down a bit. And we can just leave that ticking over for the whole day. I'm sorry. Right, yeah, concentrate on me. No, sorry, the phone is really <laughs> wet. I was a bit worried about the phone. Right, phone is waterproof. Okay, red light. Right, dish number two while that cooks. Some figs. So, um, in season these weren't off the trees in the village unfortunately so i am just gonna i'm gonna take the tops off and then cut them into four but not all the way through if that makes sense so i just do this i should have prepped some of these beforehand it's not exciting any questions while we're no none so far how many have we got on today 27. Well, I, mean, I thought there'd be more than that in the rain they're obviously all out cooking on their eggs. So right, we get about 500 people during the week watch these. Um, so uh, yeah, not many live, but a lot afterwards. Right, now squeeze them. Like that. And then we're gonna get um, a little bit of goat's cheese. Um, this is exactly the same one we used a couple of weeks ago been with us to Cornwall. I'm going to get the goat's cheese in there. It can get messy, but whoops. All used to be me, me being messy. So hopefully um, some of you will have seen new product came in this week. Uh, and then went out of stock again. Um, so some of you managed to get convectors that didn't already have them. Uh, there is another batch coming in later in the month um, and it should be a load more this time. Um, so I think that's the worst of it. Um, the, um, I'll just wipe it there. Um, the Egg Genius is further out. I think that's November time. 
um, but otherwise, you know, pizza stones are coming back in um, and so on. So uh, pretty much everything should be starting to come back in. Right, we're going to take some Parma ham or prosciutto, not Parma ham, and I'm going to wrap it. So Jane has asked, are the fire rings in? Oh, I don't know. That's a good question. I'm just going to put a wooden stick through it. Now, if you're worried about them burning, you can um, you can soak them beforehand to slow them down. Um, obviously, you don't need to do it on a day like today because um, everything is soaking. Jane, can you drop Nick a DM and ask him about the D, um, the fire rings and we'll follow up and have a look for you. It's just I um, can't note it down and I'm worried I'll forget. So. Yeah, just uh, either email me, nick at meat smoke fire, um, and I can find out. I spoke to the office uh, yesterday. Um, we've got a new new man in charge. So I spoke to John yesterday, which was great. First time I've met him. Uh, or spoke to him, not first time, but um, first time I've had it's time to, to talk to him in detail. Uh, and hopefully I'll be meeting him the week after next. Uh, he's going to come up, his daughter's at Cambridge, so uh, uh, he's going to be up, so hopefully we'll get to catch up, um, which will be great. Um, but I will show you a couple of other things. These aren't the prettiest by me, as usual. Right, so we've got figs wrapped in prosciutto, a bit of goat's cheese in there, and I've got my second egg over here. So I'm going to pop over. Go. Um, sitting at just under 200. So I'll open it up. Oh, I haven't got a grid. Not very clever. Uh, no, don't we tell guys? No, I'll put these down. Let me grab my grid. Just can't even see it. What have I done with that? <laughs> I'm not singing whilst to try and find the grid. The old school. Original one. And what we will do is we'll clean it. And I've showed you this technique a few times. Get some decent foil and just give it a good rub. There we go, nice and clean. Right. So I'm going to pop these back in. I'm going to cook them direct. Uh, should crisp up, they're going to take about 10 to 15 minutes. And then we'll drizzle them with a bit of honey and a bit of balsamic. Right. Let's shut those down. I'll give my nose a little wipe. It's got drips on it. So let's have a look at the chaos over here. Let me move some this out of the way. Give it a good stir. Now it's quite um, quite loose at the moment, but that's why I put the water in to loosen it up. But out over the day, it will it will um, boil off some of that liquid, get a bit thicker. Everything will come together, and with that wood, you'll start to see the smoke coming in. You'll get that smoke flavour, and it will taste. I mean, I can smell it now, but it will start tasting absolutely delicious. I'll just give my hands a little wash. Okay. I'm going back onto the body. Any questions, Helena? Uh, Jane did ask when are the new products in. I'm not entirely sure what which new product she's referring to, but again, email me and I can uh, find out for you. Um, so, uh, all, I think all the eggs are back in, as far as I'm aware. Um, so yeah, you pretty much get everything bar the convectors for the large at the moment in the back. At some point last week, the baking stones were in stock and the convectors weren't, and then the following day it's the other way around, and then neither of them, but they are all coming back. And um, they're working really hard on it. The factory in Mexico's um, had 200 new staff trained or recruited and trained, and they've taken it now to where they're working 24 hours, six days a week. So um, it's not just the UK that is short of product, it's the whole globe. Um, everybody in lockdown bought an egg. Brilliant. Right. So, um, I don't know if any of you have seen this, um, Big Green Egg are moving into different types of charcoal. Um, so this arrived yesterday, um, 
haven't had a chance to try it yet, but we'll give that a go over the weekend and uh, give you a write up of what we think of it. Um, Big Green Egg themselves tell us, or told me it, it um, uh, burns slightly hotter. Um, it's, it doesn't feel much lighter, but it is apparently a little bit lighter, but we'll give it a go. Um, it is sustainably sourced. It's all from a, it's not rainforest. Um, that was the first question I asked them. It is sustainably sourced. So uh, yeah, it's supposed to be less smoky. So those of you who don't like the smoky t uh, flavor of the big green egg, you might like this. So, you know, normal stuff and new stuff. So we're gonna get, put them side by side and see how they work out. Right, those are on, those are on. Curing and smoking. Okay. So let me just uh, get that out of the way. I'm just gonna go and get a piece of cloth from the board. From the cupboard. Right, so cold smoking and curing. Um, goat's cheek is everywhere. So um, when you smoke salmon, you've got two options. You can hot smoke or you can cold smoke. Hot smoking is like when you do it on a plank, you'll get that smoky flavor in there, uh, but you're also cooking the salmon at the same time. Proper smoked salmon is just cured and then smoked. So we have, um, and it's so simple to do, and it tastes delicious. Our whole family loves this, uh, you know, especially at Christmas time. So, Actually, it's a uh, big hit with the kids as well. Yeah. So I've got a, I'll take it out and put it on the board now. Um, we have a half a side of salmon, and I'll, you'll see why it's half. Um, so we've got half a side of salmon there. And to cure it, it's so simple, but it does just take a little bit of time. So in my two bowls here, and keep the water out, I have 200 grams of sugar, just granulated sugar, 200 grams of salt. I'm going to put them together in a bowl. I'm going to give them a mix up with my wooden spoon, which is over here. So I'm just going to mix those together. And now you have a cure. That's all it is to cure your salmon. Um, the process of curing is taking moisture out of the meat, out of the fish, whatever you're trying to cure. And once the moisture level is below about 30%, um, it's at that point that the bacteria in the meat can't live anymore. There's not enough moisture in there to sustain them. So that's what you're doing when you're curing it. You know, in olden days, you used to put a lot of salt on big bits of meat. Um, and that's how you know sailors and when you wanted to transport it that's how you cured it um, we're just adding some sugar into there just to give it a bit of sweetness as well um, but it's just just salt now I use um, it's called PDV um, salt if you look on Amazon you can um, people use it for their ponds but it's vacuum dried um, salt there's no uh, anti-caking agents in there um, that's what I use but if you've got just normal table salt that's fine so um, so we've got some sugar and salt. Now we particularly like to add a bit of flavour to it. So you could add um, some beetroot, but we love a little bit of aniseed. So we've got some fennel seeds. So I'll put a chunk of fennel seeds in there. It's probably a couple of tablespoons. And you can just mix those through. And this is going to be the cure now for that piece of salmon. So um, best to use glass, um, not metal. You don't want it to react with the, with the salt. So I'm just going to use a glass dish. I'm going to put a layer of um, salt and our cure on the bottom. And then I'm going to place our fish into it like that. And then I'm going to cover it with the remainder. So it's that easy. Okay. Right. So that is covered. Now, depending on how soft you like it or the texture you like you need to cure it anywhere from 6 to 24 hours we like our smoked salmon um, to be slightly softer um, so we don't cure it as long um, but I can just see I forgot to put the Worcester sauce in over there um, um, <laughs> um, 
we like our salmon to be slightly softer, so I'm only going to cure this for six hours. Okay, so we'll put that in there, and what's going to happen, I'm going to pop that in the fridge, and it's going to pull that moisture out of the, the salmon. Um, it will turn all the salt and the sugar on the outside almost to a jelly. The, um, the fennel seeds will get wet, they'll infuse their flavour into the outer layers of the salmon, and um, it tastes just absolutely delicious. So I saw Helena smiling, was there a, a good Someone's comment? just said fair play for doing your cooking this weather. <laughs> oh, it's fine, it's England, it's good. Okay, so that is our salmon and that's cured. So that's gonna go in and six hours later, I'll take it out and then I'll wash off the, the cure. Off the, for me, it's six hours. A lot of people are 12 to 24 hours, but for me, I love it at six, hour, at six hours. It won't last as long at six hours because it hasn't drawn out as much moisture but uh, uh, you know, we backpack it, it'll still be good a month later. Um, but, so that's how we cure it. Then what happens, and I've got a piece I've already done. So if you can see on there, there's a few fennel seeds stuck to it, but this was cured last night. And then I take it out and I put it on a rack like that and put it in the fridge and you leave it in the fridge uncovered overnight and it forms what's called a pellicule. It's a sticky layer on the outside. So, I mean, you can't do this, but I can feel with my finger that that is sticky and that will help the smoke to stick to the outside of this piece of fish. So someone's so. asked, um, the dish that you're gonna put in the fridge, yeah. do, do you need to cover it? No, I'll leave it totally uncovered. You can cover it if you want. Um, it doesn't matter either way, I, j I don't bother. It just goes, we've got a fridge outside with all our drinks in, it just goes in there, so. Yeah. Right. Now let's talk about the cold smoking process. Now this is going to get messy, so I'll move that out of the way a little bit. In fact, let's just have a look at our figs. Get them all right. Oh, look at that. Starting to crisp up the prosciutto. Starting nice. to... Oh yeah, they're going to be good. In we'll fact, the Worcester sauce in there. Yeah, I'll go and put the Worcester sauce in while I remember. Into our chilli. Might turn that down because that's bubbling away really quickly. Um, but what you would have seen, I'm going to guess, I don't know, four or five tablespoons. The recipe's online. Uh, it's actually on Big Green Egg's website because uh, um, we've done it so many times for them uh, as a demo. So give it a good stir. Um, these big tomatoes will break down as you cook them. That's the point. And the wet surface will attract all the smoke. So Helena can probably smell it's lovely and smoky. Um, and you'll see in a minute, I'll point out when it starts doing it again, you'll see it's smoke. Right. So, to cold smoke this, um, we're gonna use a big green egg, but we're not gonna light any charcoal. There's gonna be no charcoal in it at all. What I've got is some um, sawdust. Um, I buy this, I used to sell these, I'm not gonna do them anymore. Um, they're just too much fat, and there's other companies you can you can get a better deal at, to be fair. Um, so, um, I buy, I would buy this and these from a company called Hot Smoked. Uh, we're cold smoking, they're called Hot Smoked. They're down in Tiverton in Devon. Um, the lady who runs it, Alison, is brilliant. Customer service is, is superb. So um, I'm just gonna use their oak today, but they do all different flavors of woods. I like my salmon with oak or beech. Um, I like my, fit, my cheese, I'm gonna do some cheese as well. Um, so what you need to do with this is, um, this is stainless steel by the way, it's just this May shape. And what we're gonna do is light here and it's just gonna smolder around and into the middle. That will take about 10 hours um, to smolder around. So I'm gonna put some oak on here. Um, just store this in your garage or somewhere um, uh, where it's not gonna get damp. Might have overdone that a little bit. Right, get it into the corners. I've so, wasted a bit. So Franco's asked, yep. um, any reason you didn't use tinned pre-chopped tomatoes? Um, there is a theory, and I was trying to explain this to Helena, that, that um, whole tomatoes taste better when they break down than tins, chopped up ones. Can I tell the difference? Probably not, but when they're both exactly the same price, I'm going to go with the full ones because they will break down. If you turn around, Helen, you should be able to see the smoke now. Oh, okay. So a little bit of smoke coming out and I must turn that down. Right. I've got a bit much in here, but that's fine. 
Um, so you fill it up to the top level. If you don't fill it up, it might go out. Um, you can see there's these bars here. Um, it won't jump across them, it doesn't do that. Um, so I always fill it right to the top. Some people really worry about that, um, but that works fine for me. It's a bit spare. Did you see that, did you, Helena? No. no. And to light it, just a tea light. So uh, you get the little tea light on here. Great, my candle has got damp. Little tea light, and in one side of it, there is this little area here, and you can slide the tea light into it. And what will happen is it will start to get um, that wood smouldering. And it takes about three or four minutes. It's already smouldering a little bit. So what we're going to do, we'll take this and we'll go over to our egg over here. But there's no brolly. <laughs> we'll see. There is absolutely no charcoal in here. Um, that is the beauty. Oh, I'll just put the tea light out. And the, uh, I'll go and get the lighter again. That was my fault. Uh, if you have um, the stainless steel fire baskets, Going again. Probably easy if I do it like that. If you've got the stainless steel fire baskets from Big Green Egg, you can lift all your charcoal out in one go and just tuck it away in the dry under your table. So um, that is just going to get going. We'll come back to that in a few minutes. You can see already there's a little bit of a smolder going on. A little bit. Nice turn, yeah. yeah. You can see there's some smoke coming up past oh, yeah. the sides. Yeah, you got that? Yeah. Um, I'm going to pull the lid shut. I'm going to open the top a bit. I've got the rain cap on. Um, <laughs> first time. And I'm going to open the bottom about two fingers wide. Okay. Um, that'll let the air come through and the smoke come out. I have seen people say leave the top wide open, otherwise you get stale smoke. I have no idea what stale smoke is, but it doesn't, it's never happened to me, so I'm just going to wash my hands. We need to turn that chilli down. Yeah, I'll turn that down. Right. How are we doing for time? Uh, 12.07. Perfect. Right. Let's turn this down a little bit. Down a little bit. That will cook at 150. We're going to grab those now. I have a bit wet, I'll get a cloth. It's not done very well. So with those pigs, I should have preheated this, but I've got a, um, this is the top of a different Dutch oven. This is one, that uh, a lodge one. So, um, but it could have used the big green egg one. I'm going to take this out. Oh, they're looking lush. We're going to get them into our pan, which I should have heated, but. Wow. Hut, hut, hut. Oh, I lost that one. With a spatula. I'm going to get them all in here. And while they heat up, I'll leave the lid open. Fine, that'll heat it up quicker. Then pour over a little bit of honey, just some normal runny honey. It's not so runny in the cold weather. Cool. A couple of tablespoons of runny honey on there. And a bit of balsamic. Now this stuff isn't runny. Lovely. We'll give those five minutes and then they'll be ready. Right, let's have a look at our smoker. There's definitely smoke coming out. Okay, when I open it, there's definitely smoke in there. Now, if you look down at the smoker, I don't know if you can see right at the bottom, uh, you can see it's starting to smolder. I'm going to give it another couple of minutes. 
Um, but what I will do is pop the stuff in so you can see how it um, fits in. And I'll blow that thing out in a second. Let me just get a tiny bit of kitchen roll. I'll just use that. I just want to wipe, dry these grids a little bit. I cleaned them off a bit earlier. Yeah. Um, if you are going to put cold smoke stuff, um, do clean the grids off a little bit. Um, otherwise, it just puts black marks on all your cheese and your fish. So here we go. We'll pop in. I have some Wensleydale. I have some boring cheddar that won't be so boring. Uh, I've forgotten what that one is. Lincolnshire, that's what it is. And then I'm going to take my salmon. I'm going to put it on there. Um, skin side down. And I'm going to shut the lid and leave it. Did you need to blow that thing out? Yeah, I'll blow it out in a minute. We'll come back and blow that out. But I just want the sawdust to get going enough and then we'll blow that out. So um, if you look at me. Sorry. <laughs> um, so those will sit in there for about 10 hours. I, I normally put them in for the whole whole process. That's how I like it. Um, the cheese you could put in again for another, um, uh, another run. Um, if you're into your bacon, um, you can buy, um, I suggest don't buy salt peter and start mixing your own bacon cures. Um, they do a bacon cure on hot smoked, um, so just buy their bacon cure, you can get a whole pork belly or a pork loin, you can cure them, so you basically put the, um, it tells you exactly how much salt you need of the cure you need, you put them in the fridge for the period depending on how thick it is, so it's normally about a week, take it out, let it, put it in the fridge overnight, just like we did the salmon, let it get that pellicule, let it get sticky on the outside, and then you can smoke your own bacon, and it lasts for months. It is delicious. It's proper, proper bacon. You should all try it. Um, so yeah, um, if I was doing bacon, I might put it through two smokes if you like it really nice and smoky. Um, so we have smoked fish, uh, smoked salmon, smoked cheese. I will that other bit of salmon that's curing. We will we'll smoke that tomorrow. Um, we've got these beautiful, and then just starting to warm up now. Um, figs with goat's cheese, prosciutto and honey and balsamic glaze and then over here let's come down to the temperature now beautifully Oof, we have nice. our chili con carne and that I am going to cook for most of the afternoon uh, and that will be our dinner tonight and um, we'll probably do it with some um, I'm going to get under the cover now because it's really lashing it down um, we'll probably do it with some um, big green egg baked potatoes, um, the best baked potatoes you can get. Put them in there at 180 degrees, 200 degrees, um, obviously prick them, otherwise they will explode. Uh, and put them in for about an hour and a half, then drizzle with them olive oil, a bit of salt on the top, uh, and that will crisp them up beautifully. Two hours for a, a baked potato, and it'll be the best one you've ever had. Serve it with a bit of chilli con carne, or obviously you could do rice and whatever else. So. We'll send some photos of whatever we do with it later. In this weather, it might be rice. Yeah. No. <laughs> Doesn't matter here. We've got umbrellas and everything. So, um, any more questions? Uh, I haven't seen any more. Oh, cancel. Uh, I haven't seen any more come up. Okay. So, any usual thing, you can contact me during the week. This week, I'm around pretty much every day bar Wednesday. Um, so, uh, yeah, feel free to contact me. Um, oh, I had one more thing to show you. Those of you who brought, who bought the Pro Q, um, uh, the rotisserie, if you unscrew the handle, I'm not going to show you on the egg because I haven't got it here. You can unscrew the handle, and I have for those of you who like your, and maybe we'll do it one week, your um, shawarma rama or your um, Kelly Babs. Um, we've got these new plates now that. I can get it on, screw onto the end of your skewer so that when you've finished cooking your chicken on the rotisserie, you can take it off. Obviously, we wouldn't have these two uh, spikes on there. You can take it off and pop it on the table and cut it like a proper kebab. So, um, those will go on the website shortly. But uh, yeah, just a couple of things to show you. But, um, anything else just give us a shout if you need anything from Big Green Egg 
uh, do contact me. Uh, we can anything that's in stock, we can quote you for and get shipped to you just as quickly as they can ship direct to you. Well, it comes direct from them anyway, and it just helps us out. Um, any questions? Just let me know. Any ideas for next week's cook? We had. I know we had a monkfish curry requested. Yeah. We're going to practice that during the week. We did one while we were away on holiday, um, and we've got some monkfish in. We're going to do that. Uh, we've got Karen making her big green egg Christmas cake this weekend. Awesome. Lovely weather for it, Karen. Doesn't matter inside the egg. Um, but yeah, um, if you've got any other ideas, um, one of the things we are going to do is do a turkey. Um, so we'll do a Christmas, and whether we do it live or whether we record it and then put the video out there, but we'll show you how we're going to do uh, a Christmas turkey on the rotisserie this year, because that's been asked for, so we'll get that sorted. Um, but if there's anything you'd like us to do, let us know. Um, Oh, I missed his name. Sorry, someone just asked about Peter's Stones again. Um, they're not back in until... They'll be, I think they're on the 20th. The 20th of this month. So um, just let us know if you need one and we will keep an eye out on the stock level. Yes. And we can quote you on those, get them shipped to you direct. Yep. Perfect. Right. We're going to get out of the rain, tidy up a little bit, enjoy our figs for lunch, uh, look after our smoking cheese and so on. Uh, this afternoon and then have chili con carne for dinner tonight um, so yeah once again thank you for watching uh, and we will see you all hopefully next week and uh, do let us know what you'd like us to cook brilliant right now if you can press the button twice Helena <laughs> mm. end at the top oh, yeah, sorry.